Hey everybody, welcome back to Optimal Health Redefined with Sheila and Dr. Diane Ginsberg. Today we're going to talk about what happens to your body on the pill and what you can do to support maybe some of the negative side effects of being on the pill. The strain on your body. The strain on your body that it can cause because it is a medication. It is hormones, but it's not natural hormones your body would make. They are in a different form. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And then also if you are in that really perimenopausal menopausal range and you need to be thinking about you know they've had you on the pill to manage your menopausal symptoms which is really not a great idea but correct they very have, important they have done that to you and you need to get off because you are your clotting risk is increasing with your age and all of that how can we support you so um first let's kind of start with the teenager that we see that got put on the pill because they had really heavy periods passing out of school, whatever, and then just never got off. And now they're, you know, one of the things I always like to point out to people when we see our patient in their 20s is that if you ever want to have kids, whatever was going wrong with your periods really needs to be figured out. So just because you're masking your symptoms right now, now your flow is regular and it's not as heavy and it's not painful. That doesn't mean that you fixed your problem with the pill. They just masked it and, you know, Correct. all of that. So heavy periods. Um, inflammation. I always tell people the ovaries wake up every day and say, hmm, can I have a baby in this? And it's going to talk to the brain and it's going to talk to the microbiome and it's going to talk to all the inflammatory cells around. And if the ovary turns around and says, I'm not having a baby in this, it will make hormones that are not quote unquote, the optimal balance to ovulate to have a baby. You become a little more estrogen dominant, you cramp, you're uncomfortable, you ovulate irregularly, you're diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, and that's the band-aid of the pill. And, and I tell people, my grandmother will have periods on the pill because you're putting in estrogen, putting in progesterone, fluffing the uterine lining, yanking it all away, and the lining will bleed. So no matter what's going on kind of behind the scenes, you will look like you're normalized. So it's really important to understand that whatever your issues were, you have to fix. Not that we don't say, hey, taking a birth control pill, if everything is going well and you choose to use that for birth control is bad, we're not anti-birth control pill. But it's important to understand whether you had normal healthy cycles and you're on the pill not to get pregnant, or whether you had a problem and you band-aided that you have to understand that you got to fix the problem and you have to understand what the pill is. So the birth control pill is oral estradiol. It is that part of it is similar to the estrogen in your body, but oral estrogen goes through the liver to be broken down. 80 to 90% of it actually winds up peed out in the toilet before you even break it down and use it. And it is very hard to break down. And you use the proteins that thin your blood in order to break it down. You share that. So, so those proteins now have two jobs. So that's where blood clot risk comes up. Because if this protein that keeps your body balanced and thin gets used up, now the natural clotting factors, because your body clots and unclots on a regular basis, get overwhelmed, and that's where the blood clots come from. So that's why oral estrogen is very difficult. Number two, the component that is with it is called progestin, not progesterone. Whether you're on birth control pills, an IUD, or hormone replacement, it's a big pet peeve I have with hormone replacement. People talk about PremPro, which is, yeah, the horse pee and progesterone. It's not. It's a progestin, and they cannot be interchanged. It's like looking at somebody that, that everybody's five feet tall, and, 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 and you go, well, they kind of look all similar. Well, the, your sister is different from the person down the street, even though they're five feet, all five feet tall. So understand that the actual molecule itself is not progesterone. It is a fake progesterone. It is a mutated progesterone. It is progestin. It is also very difficult to push it through the liver to be used. And it then acts on the uterus and the lining and the tubes to prevent the pregnancy from happening. But it uses a lot of nutrients in the liver and messes with your system. So while on it, 
So one of the things we always tell everyone, it requires a lot of B vitamins to break down that oral estrogen and yep. then the progestin. So you need to really support yourself with a good methylated B supplement. Yep. Um, examples of this would be B Supreme from Design for Health, methylated B Complex from Orthomolecular. Um, there's a lot of good companies, Pure Encapsulations makes a good methylated B. So um, that would be something you would want to support yourself with supplementation wise. Now, B vitamins naturally in the diet come mostly from animal proteins and vegetables. So having a very nutrient rich diet, making sure you're getting a lot of your leafy greens. Um, I would encourage you, like I encourage everyone to eat liver. It's one of the most nutrient dense foods you can get and it's got a lot of good quality B vitamins in it. So um, you can eat that in pate form. You can get a good grass fed beef blend that's got liver in it. That's how I do it with my kids and they have no idea they're eating that. So those are examples of that. Um, and then, you know, you also want to be careful. So you're putting a lot of extra pressure on the liver. You don't want to add other things to it. So the fake estrogens that you get, you know, from plastic water bottles and phthalates and some of the things we've makeup, talked about in other videos, makeups. your self care stuff. Um, you want to be real careful about the burden you're putting on your body in other areas because you've got this extra burden on the liver. And sometimes, you know, like we mentioned, you need birth control because you're trying to prevent pregnancy or you just haven't figured out how to make yourself stop passing out while you're having horrible periods. While we're working on that, we may keep you on the birth control pill. So it becomes necessary to support your body while you're doing that. Um, we want to make sure that your gut, you know, so your gut microbiome is affected by the birth control pill yes. in somewhat negative ways. So a probiotic can help with that, but that kind of goes back also to what does your diet look like? Are you eating a lot of good fiber, diverse vegetables and fruits? Um, are you eating good proteins? You know, protein is also important. We don't talk about that a lot with the gut, but having good protein also affects the good gut microbiome bugs. So really just, you know, looking again, the things we preach all the time, you need to have a good, well-balanced, healthy diet. Understanding again, that anything that is going on the liver, other medicines that you may take, that you may need, um, uh, anything else going down there is going to put more strain on the system. And so, that can affect, sorry to interrupt you, but I forgot about digestion. Yeah. So your digestion, your stomach acid may be depleted by the birth control pill, which would affect digestion in all areas down the pathway. So doing some digestive enzyme support, like digest from transformation enzymes, maybe taking betaine HCL, um, especially if you're someone prone to acid reflux, which a lot of times is low stomach acid as opposed to high. Those are all things that can help support your body while on the pill. And again, because the years that you're going to be on it, you're also getting older. And as you exist each year on this planet, so now you're into your late 20s, early 30s, and you turn around and say, now I wanna have a baby. When you take the pill off, your gut bugs have gotten older. The balance of the gut bugs have gotten worse. The DNA is less efficient. The organization of the system is less efficient. So again, support your system as much as possible and support it even more as you continue to get older. Now, the second thing that we'll see is women will get, let's say they will have their kids and then they'll find themselves 37, 38, 39 and they'll have a tubal and now they will be 41 and they'll say, oh my God, now my periods are terrible and I'm doubled over and I'm cramping even worse and I never did that before. We've talked about estrogen dominance quite a bit. We've talked about detox and offloading the estrogen quite a bit. One of the big things that happens is when you do that, not great, and you start to get these roller coaster estrogens that build up and the cramps get heavy and the system gets a bit more strained, that's where a lot of women will, will bleed heavy and they'll wind up with an ablation or they'll have a hysterectomy trying to treat that problem. But the other thing that happens is, is as the cycles get irregular, as well as heavy in your late 40s, see a lot of OBGYNs put women back on pills. And that is the worst thing you can do because you're taking an aging system who has a failing microbiome and older cells and you're putting this heavy demand on it, which is the estradiol progestin. And now you're making more byproducts, free radicals, more inflammation. You're creating more issues. 
when we give hormone replacement to women as we get older, we never want to give oral estrogen. We give it through a transdermal cream because passing through the liver is difficult. One of the big complaints I get from patients is, I just don't want to deal with it. I'm going back on the pill. That's not a good way to look at it. That's not healthy because what happens is same problems in your system, but now your system can't recover. So now what happens is you go into ovarian failure. You're still taking the pill. Now you find yourself 51, but your system has been so beat up by the pill that now your weight's up, your fatigue is terrible, your sleep is dysfunctional, and you've not gotten to the point where you've got your own system, say, balanced, your own hormones balanced, if you would, or balanced within your gut that your body can handle it, and now you're miserable. So it's there's really, I don't think any reason when you have irregular periods in your late 40s to go back on the pill. The key is to come off it and work on balancing your body, right? Balancing your gut, balancing your nutrients, maybe running a micronutrient deficiency test, mm -hmm. looking at your gut bugs. I'll let Sheila talk about that. But with aging, we know all those things change. So, okay, I've got irregular cycles. I am a little more estrogen dominant. You don't want to shove that duct tape on, which is the pill. You want to fix the system so you transition into menopause better. Yeah, and, and a lot of times the first thing we will do before we get you off the pill, we will change your diet. So it may be that you need a targeted, you know, kind of similar. The reason that we've always kind of talked about a paleo type diet is we're really just talking about a natural real food diet. Mm -hmm. That may end up including some grains for some people who can um, handle those, but we're talking about food as close to nature as possible. Um, as locally grown as possible. So we're just talking about a real food diet. We have a program on our website called the Real Food Rebuild. That is something that we'll often do with people when we're trying to get them off the pill. We were just put in these really good anti-inflammatory nutrient dense foods for a couple of months while we're looking at fixing whatever deficiencies have developed while they were on the pill. And then, you know, we may do a stool test where we look, you know, is your beta glucuronidase elevated? If so, then we may need a more targeted detox for that estrogen dominance as we work on getting you off the pill. Now, if you're a woman in menopause who was put on the pill to manage hot flashes, the best thing that we can do is transition you off onto more bioidentical hormones. Yes, 100%. Because it makes, it always makes me laugh because women, I'll find women that are 55 years old that show up on the pill and I'll say, well, why aren't you on hormones? Because they go, hormones will give me breast cancer. So they just tried to stay on the pill as long as possible. Nothing is worse than oral estrogen and progestin. And even that, please remember, the Women's Health Initiative that said hormones give you breast cancer has been disproven. The reason that the breast cancer amount of patients in the hormone group was elevated is because the group, the placebo group, had actually taken hormones younger, which made them fitter and healthier so their breast cancer risk was lower than the average population. So it's not even that the hormone group was high, it's that this group was lower. It's kind of like if somebody runs a five minute mile and somebody else runs a six minute mile and you tell the six minute mile people they're slow. No, it's just relatively speaking, the other guys are more fit. So, so when you're on this pill and you just stay on it indefinitely, and, and I see women again push that all the time, I don't want to stop and let me get through menopause. The key is, is to get your system as healthy as possible to stay in front of the changes that are inevitable. And when those inevitable winds come and start blowing you back and forth, if you've widened your balance beam as much as possible, that's where nutrient testing comes in. As free radicals increase with aging, you may need more glutathione, you may need more vitamin C, you may need more CoQ10. You, know, you fix what you need and then you can handle it. Some women will need progesterone support early on in the late perimenopause, early menopause. And then what starts to happen is the estrogen drops, we add the estrogen in. So, so once you're done, really having babies, if you would, and there is no need for any form of birth control, getting off the pill as soon as possible is number one thing to do. And one of the ways you can see if your brain and body are still connected, 
enough to make a baby is to draw your FSH or your follicle stimulating hormone a couple days off the pills. So on the fake pills. So if your fake pills start on say Thursday on a 24 day cycle, draw your blood on Saturday. If you have a full week off, then draw it say two or three days into the fake pills. And if you have a Mirena, you can draw it anytime or a Paragard. So the take home from this is we're here to help you support through your life and make sure that you stay in the middle of the road as much as possible, because then whatever does come your way, you'll be able to bounce back from. But, but the answer isn't just put a pill on, the answer is get yourself as healthy and fit as can be, and the cramps and the irregular cycles and all that will actually write themselves on their own. Yep, all right, stay healthy.